For a long time, the health work has been heavily promoted in our church and central to our evangelistic strategy. Reports today speak of the Adventist Blue Zones and note how Seventh-day Adventists live between six and eight years longer than the rest of the population. The rates of disease such as cancer and heart disease are significantly lower than the rest of the population and some diseases such as lung cancer are almost non-existent. How did this come to be? Was it luck? Was it chance? Or was it something greater than that? In 1863 in Otsego, Michigan, Ellen White was given her health vision where she was shown things that were way ahead of the medical practices of her time. For example, she was shown that tobacco was a slow, insidious, and most malignant poison, common knowledge to us today. Yet in her time, the medical wisdom would have prescribed or at least not deterred you from using tobacco should you have any throat or lung issues. It wasn't until a hundred years later when the Surgeon General of the United States finally condemned the use of tobacco. The vision was very broad in scope and encouraged holistic health and natural preventative medicine. Whilst there is always a need for acute care, preventative medicine seeks to prevent as much as possible disease in the body. Under Ellen White's guidance, they set up a health institute called the Western Health Reform Institute. Dr. John Harvey Kellogg, today most famous for the world-renowned breakfast cereals that he invented, became the director of this institute at the young age of 24. John Harvey Kellogg attended some of the best medical schools in his day, the University Medical School in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and the New York University Medical College at Bellevue Hospital in New York City. He graduated in 1875 and would go on to be one of the leading doctors in the United States, treating both the rich and famous as well as those less fortunate. He changed the name to the Battle Creek Health Sanitarium. Sanitarium is a twist on the word sanatorium, which was a health resort for invalid soldiers. Replacing the O with an A, he thus created a new word for the English language. He would go on to pioneer some of the best medical practices of his day and invent some ingenious machines that were the forerunners of much of the modern equipment you'll see today in a gym such as this rowing machine and Gripmaster. Many of these were on the Titanic when it set sail for use by its wealthy passengers. The sanitarium would start out as a great witness to the message that God had given, but it would later veer off track. Unfortunately today, this message has often been neglected. And while many recognize that we do have a message and understand the truth and validity of it, Many people do not live up to what they know about health. The health work was created to be the right arm. It was to assist the gospel, not to be isolated on its own, but to work harmoniously together. Healthy living was not to be an end in itself, but its purpose was to work with the gospel, creating an opening wedge to people's hearts. May we implement these principles first in our lives, and then also in the churches we are a part of as we witness to the communities we live in.